The screen cut through the quiet night like a blade. Detective Mia Harper had been in this business long enough to recognize the sound. Not just fear, but pure, primal terror. She sprinted toward the abandoned warehouse, her heart pounding harder than it had in years. Inside, she found the body, an older man, his lifeless eyes staring at the ceiling, a pool of blood spreading beneath him. But there was something strange. His hand clutched a single chess piece, a white knight. Beside him, a note. It read, checkmate in 24 hours. Mia's breath caught in her throat. This wasn't just a murder. It was a game. And the clock had just started. The dead man was Arthur Blanchard, a retired judge known for his harsh sentences, a man with no shortage of enemies. But why the chess piece? Why the cryptic note? As Mia scoured his life for clues, she realized this was no ordinary revenge killing. This was a challenge. Her mind raced. She needed answers fast. She knew what the killer was doing, forcing her to play along, daring her to solve the puzzle before they struck again. Mia's gut told her the next victim was already chosen, and if she didn't move fast, she'd be staring at another body within a day. The next morning, as Mia sifted through old case files, she found it, a series of unsolved murders from five years ago, all men who had crossed paths with the law in some way. Each victim was left with a chess piece. The case had gone cold, but now it was back. And this time, the killer was more brazen. Her phone buzzed. A new text message. Knight takes bishop. Her blood ran cold. The bishop, the next victim, had to be someone tied to Blanchard, someone high up, someone respected. It took only moments for her to make the connection, Judge Lydia Perez. The next move was about to happen. She rushed to Judge Perez's home, but she was too late. The police had already arrived, cordoning off the area. Mia pushed her way through the crowd, her heart sinking. There, on the steps, Judge Perez lay still, a black knight placed neatly beside her. This was more than a game. This was a vendetta. As Mia drove back to the precinct, the pressure mounted. The killer was always one step ahead. But something about the pattern gnawed at her. Why chess? Why these specific victims? And then it clicked, these weren't just random targets. This was personal. She dug deeper into Blanchard's old cases and found a common thread. Five years ago, he had presided over a case involving a man named Samuel Harker, a chess prodigy who had been wrongly convicted of manslaughter. Harker had always maintained his innocence but the system had failed him. He spent years in prison before being exonerated. And now he was back for revenge, turning the justice system into a twisted game of chess. The killer's final move was coming, and Mia knew she was the queen he was hunting. Harker wasn't just playing with the pieces on the board, he was playing with her mind. That night, as Mia sat alone in her office, a new note slid under the door. Checkmate. The question wasn't whether she could stop the game. The question was whether she could survive it. Mia stared at the note, her pulse quickening. Checkmate. The word echoed in her mind. Was this it? The final move? But if Harker thought it was over, he was wrong. She wasn't going down without a fight. She grabbed her phone, dialing the team, calling in backup. Every instinct screamed that this wasn't just a taunt something was about to happen. The precinct was quiet, too quiet, as the late shift officers worked at their desks, unaware that they were all part of Harker's twisted game. She paced her office, eyes darting toward the door. Her gut told her that Harker was nearby, watching her. The pieces of his plan were falling into place. But then, something clicked, he wanted her to feel trapped. He wanted her to believe that she was running out of moves. But Harker had forgotten one thing, Mia never played by the rules. Flipping through the case files one last time, Mia spotted something she had missed before. In the original trial, Harker's lawyer had hinted at a partner, someone on the outside who had helped set him up. That partner was never identified. What if the partner wasn't just a loose end? What if they were in on this game? Mia's heart raced as she pieced it together. 
Parker wasn't working alone. Someone else was pulling strings, and she had been so focused on him, she hadn't seen it. Before she could make the call, the lights in the precinct flickered. Then, darkness. A moment later, a single spotlight clicked on, illuminating the far end of the bullpen. There, standing in the light, was Samuel Harker. Hello, detective, he said, his voice eerily calm. I've been waiting for you. Mia's hand hovered over her gun, but she hesitated. This felt too easy. Harker wouldn't just walk in like this. There had to be more. She took a step toward him, her voice steady despite the adrenaline surging through her veins. It's over, Harker. You're out of moves. He smirked, shaking his head slowly. You think so? He reached into his pocket and pulled out another chess piece, a queen, this time. He held it up, letting the light catch it. You always were the queen in this game, Mia. But you never understood the real strategy. As he spoke, Mia realized what was happening. This was a distraction. The real danger was somewhere else. Someone else. Suddenly, her phone buzzed. A text. She glanced at it, and her blood ran cold. Rook takes queen. Before she could react, a deafening explosion rocked the building. The windows shattered, and smoke filled the air. The force of the blast knocked Mia off her feet, her ears ringing as she hit the ground hard. For a moment, everything was chaos, flashes of light, the sound of people shouting, the metallic taste of blood in her mouth. Through the haze, she saw him. Harker, calmly walking toward her, untouched by the chaos around them. He knelt down beside her, placing the queen piece on the ground next to her. This was never about winning, detective, he whispered. It was about teaching you the price of justice. Mia struggled to focus, her vision blurry. She could feel the weight of the game pressing down on her. But as her mind cleared, she realized something. Harker's partner, whoever they were, had just revealed themselves. The explosion had been meant to take her out, but she was still alive. That meant they hadn't accounted for something. They had made a mistake. With all her strength, Mia pushed herself up, ignoring the pain shooting through her body. She looked at Harker, her eyes narrowing. You think you've won, but you've just made your last move. At that moment, sirens blared outside, and the sound of heavy boots filled the hall. Harker looked toward the entrance, his calm demeanor cracking for the first time. Mia forced herself to her feet, blood trickling down her temple. You're not the only one who can set a trap. Before Harker could react, SWAT officers burst through the door, guns drawn. Harker's eyes widened as they surrounded him, leaving no room for escape. As they cuffed him, Mia stepped forward, wiping the blood from her face. Checkmate. But even as Harker was led away, Mia knew the game wasn't over. The real mastermind was still out there, and she had a feeling they wouldn't stop until every piece was off the board. Her phone buzzed again, a final text appearing on the screen. The game has only just begun. And with that, Mia realized the truth, this was never just about revenge. It was about power, manipulation, and control. And the person behind it was far more dangerous than Harker ever could have been. The real enemy was still lurking in the shadows, waiting to make their next move. The following days were a blur of debriefs, reports, and damage control. The explosion had been contained to the precinct's upper floor, and thankfully, no one had been killed. But the sense of vulnerability hung over the department like a storm cloud. Mia Harper, for all her instincts, still felt the weight of the chessboard. Samuel Harker was in custody, but he had been just a pawn, a brilliant one, yes, but a pawn nonetheless. Someone else was out there, someone who had planned this meticulously and played them all like pieces in their game. And then there was the text. The game has only just begun. Mia couldn't shake the feeling that the mastermind was someone close, someone who knew the department, someone who understood the law, and how to bend it to their will. As she sat in her office late one evening, flipping through the files on Harker's old case, she found herself drawn to a name she hadn't considered deeply before, James Kincaid, Harker's original defense attorney. 
He was well known in legal circles for his tactical brilliance in court, but there had always been rumors, whispers of backdoor deals, of clients who seemed too well connected to go to jail. His name hadn't stood out to her before, but something about his involvement now nodded her. Mia pulled up Kincaid's background. His record was spotless, but the more she read, the more it felt too clean, too perfect. And his connection to Harker went deeper than she realized. They hadn't just been lawyer and client, they had attended the same prestigious law school years before. They had history. Suddenly, her phone buzzed, breaking her concentration. Another text. You're looking in the right direction, Mia. But are you ready for the next move? Her blood ran cold. She shot to her feet, scanning the room. How did they know what she was investigating? Her laptop, her phone, everything felt compromised. She called the tech department to sweep her office for bugs immediately. Whoever was behind this was watching her closely. Too closely. The next morning, she paid a visit to Kincaid's law office. It was a high-end establishment, all glass and polished wood, designed to intimidate. Mia wasn't easily rattled, but something about Kincaid set her on edge. He greeted her in his office with a smile that didn't reach his eyes. Detective Harper, Kincaid said smoothly, offering her a seat. To what do I owe the pleasure? I'm following up on Samuel Harker's case, Mia said, watching his reaction. You were his defense attorney, but I'm wondering if your role went beyond that. Kincaid's smile widened, but there was a hint of something darker behind it. My role was to defend a man wrongfully accused. Nothing more, nothing less. Mia leaned forward, meeting his gaze head on. Harker's been arrested for multiple murders, and yet somehow, he thinks this game isn't over. I want to know why. Kincaid's expression didn't waver. You seem to think I have something to do with this. I assure you, detective, I'm just a lawyer. I don't play games. But Mia could sense the tension. Kincaid wasn't rattled easily, but she could see it, the faint flicker in his eyes, the tightening of his jaw. He was hiding something, but he was too smart to give it away. As Mia left his office, she knew she was walking into dangerous territory. Kincaid was powerful, and if he was involved, she would need more than gut instinct to take him down. But there was one thing she was certain of, Kincaid wasn't just playing the game, he was orchestrating it. Back at the precinct, she gathered her team. She needed to put the pressure on Kincaid, but without tipping her hand. They needed to trace every connection, every transaction, every person who might link Kincaid to Harker and the killings. That night, as Mia sat alone in her apartment, sifting through more case files, her phone buzzed again. Another text. Do you think he's the king, Mia? Or just another piece on the board? Her heart skipped a beat. It wasn't Kincaid. The mastermind was still out there, and they were toying with her, watching her every move. She had assumed Kincaid was the one pulling the strings, but what if he was just another pawn? What if the person behind all of this was closer than she realized? Her phone buzzed again. Check your door. Mia's breath caught. Slowly, she stood and approached her apartment door, her hand hovering over her gun. When she opened it, there was nothing. Nothing except a single chess piece sitting on the floor. A black queen. The message was clear, she was the next target. But before she could even process the implications, her phone rang. It was Captain Richards from the precinct. His voice was tense, urgent. Mia, you need to get down here. There's been another murder. Mia felt her stomach drop. Who? Richards hesitated. James Kincaid. He's dead. The killer had just eliminated the man Mia thought was the mastermind. But now, with Kincaid out of the way, it became painfully clear that this wasn't about Kincaid at all. He had been another distraction, another piece sacrificed to the game. And Mia knew she was running out of time. The killer was closing in, and if she didn't figure out their next move soon, the game wouldn't just take another victim. It would take her. Mia raced to the crime scene, her mind spinning. James Kincaid was dead. 
The man she had believed to be the mastermind behind the killings was gone, and with him, any clear path to unraveling the web of this deadly game. The rules had changed. As she approached Kincaid's mansion, the familiar chaos of flashing lights, police officers, and crime scene tape greeted her. But this time, something was different, there was an eerie calm beneath the surface. It was as if the killer had finally laid down their ultimate trap, and now all that remained was for Mia to walk right into it. Captain Richards met her at the entrance, his face grim. Kincaid was killed in his study, he said quietly. No sign of forced entry, no security footage. The cameras were wiped clean just before it happened. It's like they knew exactly what they were doing. Mia's gut churned. Of course, they knew. Whoever this was, they had planned every move down to the last detail. She followed Richards inside, her eyes scanning the lavish surroundings, but her thoughts were elsewhere. She couldn't shake the feeling that Kincaid's death had been perfectly timed, not just to eliminate him, but to throw her off course. They entered the study, and there he was, Kincaid, slumped over his grand mahogany desk, a thin line of blood trickling from a small, precise wound in his neck. It was a clean, surgical kill. But it wasn't the body that caught Mia's attention. It was what was in his hand. Another chess piece, a black king. Her heart sank. This wasn't just a game of chess anymore. The symbolism was all too clear. Kincaid had been the king, but he had been sacrificed, toppled in one final move. And now, Mia was left standing in the middle of a board with no idea who the real player was. As she examined the piece more closely, a chilling thought struck her. The black queen she had found at her door, what if it wasn't just a message that she was the next target? What if it meant she was the queen in this twisted game? Her phone buzzed. Another text. You're starting to understand now, aren't you? You were never just a detective. You're the queen. But every queen needs her king. Find him. Her heart raced as the realization hit her. The killer wasn't taunting her with just the murders. They were taunting her with her own life, her past, her relationships, her very identity. They were trying to tell her that everything she thought she knew was part of this deadly puzzle. But the question was, who was her king? Back at the precinct, Mia locked herself in her office, her thoughts swirling like a storm. Who could the killer be referring to? She had no romantic partner, no one she trusted enough to call her king. But maybe that was the point. Maybe the killer was pushing her to think outside the box, to look beyond the obvious. And then she thought of someone she hadn't considered in years, Adam Cole, her former partner. They had been close once, too close, some might say. But their partnership had ended abruptly when Adam took a position in another city after a case went sideways. The case had haunted them both, a case that had left them doubting everything, including each other. They hadn't spoken in years. But could it be that Adam had somehow been drawn into this game? The more she thought about it, the more the pieces seemed to fit. Adam had always been fascinated by strategy, chess was his favorite pastime. And he had a way of getting into people's heads, understanding their weaknesses, manipulating their choices. But would he really be capable of this? Mia pulled up Adam's file. Since leaving the precinct, he had gone private, working as a consultant for high-profile clients, cases that often blurred the lines between legal and illegal. He had disappeared from the public eye a few years ago, dropping off the radar completely. She leaned back in her chair, the weight of the situation pressing down on her. Could it be Adam? Could her former partner be behind all of this? Before she could go further, her phone buzzed once more. The message was short, but it sent a shiver down her spine. You're getting closer. He's waiting for you at the park. 10 p.m. Don't be late. Mia felt her chest tighten. The park. It was where she and Adam used to meet after work to blow off steam, to decompress after tough cases. If Adam was behind this, he was drawing her back to the beginning, back to the place where everything had started. She didn't have a choice. She had to go. At 9.58 p.m., Mia stood at the edge of the park, her hand resting on her holster, 
scanning the empty expanse of trees and paths. The wind howled through the branches, the only sound breaking the silence. Her heart pounded in her ears as she slowly made her way toward the spot where she and Adam used to meet, a small bench by the pond, hidden away from the main paths. As she approached, she saw a figure sitting on the bench, waiting for her. Her breath caught. It was Adam. He looked up, his face illuminated by the faint glow of a street lamp. He didn't move, didn't react, just stared at her with an expression she couldn't read. Mia stopped a few feet away, her voice barely more than a whisper. Adam, what have you done? He smiled, but it wasn't the smile she remembered. It was cold, calculating. I've done what you never could, he said softly. I've finished the game. Mia's hand tightened on her gun. What are you talking about? Adam's eyes gleamed. You were always the queen, Mia. The strongest piece on the board. But even the queen can't win without her king. Suddenly, it all became clear. Adam had been behind everything, every move, every murder. He had orchestrated the entire game, all to get to this moment, all to prove his twisted theory that Mia couldn't function without him. You needed me, he said, standing up slowly, taking a step toward her. Just like I needed you. But now, it's time to end this. Mia felt the cold barrel of her gun in her hand, her finger resting on the trigger. No, Adam. This ends with you. The tension hung thick in the air as they stood, locked in a deadly standoff. This was the final move. And only one of them would walk away from it alive. Mia's pulse raced as she and Adam stood locked in the tense standoff, their eyes unblinking, waiting for one to make the first move. The wind seemed to die down, as if the very air around them held its breath. Adam's gaze softened for a moment, his smile flickering. Do you really want to end this like this? He asked, taking another step forward, his voice eerily calm. We were the perfect team once. You were always the queen, Mia. But you never saw the real game, did you? Mia's grip on the gun tightened, her heart pounding in her chest. This isn't a game, Adam. You killed people, people who had nothing to do with us. Adam's smile faded, his eyes narrowing. You still don't get it, do you? He stopped, his voice dropping to a whisper. I didn't kill them. I never killed anyone. Mia blinked, caught off guard. What are you talking about? You orchestrated this. You planned every move. I'm not the one pulling the strings, Adam said quietly. I've just been following orders. Before Mia could process what he was saying, her phone buzzed in her pocket. She instinctively glanced at it, and her blood ran cold. Look up, Mia. The real game is about to start. Suddenly, from the shadows of the park, a figure emerged. It was a woman, dressed in all black, her face obscured by a hood. She walked with purpose, her steps measured, as if she had been waiting for this moment all along. In her hand, she held a gun, but her posture was relaxed, confident, like someone who had already won. Mia's heart raced as the woman stepped into the dim light, pulling back her hood. It was Captain Richards. Surprised? Richards said, her voice calm and icy, as if she had been waiting for this moment. Mia's mind reeled, the pieces suddenly snapping into place. Richards had always been one step ahead, always at the right place at the right time, always guiding the investigation, subtly steering Mia toward certain conclusions. Why? Mia's voice cracked, a mixture of disbelief and fury. Why would you do this? Richard smiled, her expression cold and calculating. Because you were getting too close. You've always been the best detective, Mia, but you've never known when to stop. You were bound to figure out the corruption, the payoffs, the strings being pulled behind the scenes. I couldn't let that happen. I had to keep you distracted. Mia's chest tightened as the truth washed over her. Richards had been manipulating the entire investigation, using Harker, using Kincaid, using Adam as pawns to cover her tracks. And she had played Mia perfectly, leading her to suspect Adam, all while keeping her own hands clean. 
I didn't want it to come to this, Richards continued, her voice cold. But you forced my hand. You were supposed to be the queen, Mia, but you forgot the most important rule in chess. She raised the gun, pointing it directly at Mia. The game only ends when the queen is dead. Mia's mind raced, her instincts kicking in. But before she could react, Adam stepped forward, his expression hardening. You won't touch her. Richard scoffed. You're nothing but a pawn, Adam. You did exactly what I needed you to do, distract her long enough for me to finish this. But Adam didn't flinch. Instead, he smiled, a sly, knowing smile. Actually, Captain, there's something you didn't plan for. Richards frowned, confusion flashing across her face. What? Adam's smile widened. I'm not the king in this game. I never was. Before Richards could react, a shot rang out. Richards staggered backward, her eyes wide in shock, clutching her stomach. Mia stood frozen, her mind struggling to catch up with what had just happened. Then, out of the shadows, another figure stepped forward, someone Mia hadn't expected. Detective Ryan, Mia's longtime friend and colleague, stood with his gun raised, his face set in grim determination. I've been onto you for months, Richards, Ryan said, his voice steady. You thought you could manipulate Mia, but you didn't count on the fact that I'd been watching you the whole time. Richards gasped for breath, her knees buckling as she collapsed to the ground. She looked up at Ryan, hatred and disbelief in her eyes. You. Ryan lowered his gun, his expression cold. Checkmate. Mia stared at Ryan, her mind reeling. You knew? Ryan nodded, his eyes softening as he looked at her. I couldn't tell you, Mia. I had to let this play out. Richards had too much control, too many people in her pocket. But now it's over. Mia felt a rush of relief and confusion all at once. How did you know? Ryan gave her a small, sad smile. You're not the only one with good instincts. As the sirens wailed in the distance and backup arrived, Mia stood in the park, the weight of everything crashing down on her. The game had been bigger than she realized. Richards had played everyone, but in the end, it was her own arrogance that had been her downfall. Mia looked at Adam, who was now standing silently beside her, his eyes filled with guilt and regret. He had been a pawn, but he had also played his part in Richard's plan. Is it really over? Mia asked quietly. Adam shrugged. Maybe. But one thing's for sure, it wasn't my game. As the lights of the police cars flooded the park, Mia realized that the game had never been about winning or losing. It had always been about survival. And this time, she had survived.